If you are planning on creating art while you travel or go on a mini holiday and want to know all the tips, tricks and recommendations for carrying your art supplies and painting on holiday hassle free, then this is the video for you. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs and vlogs and I recently took an amazing trip to Venice which I'll link up above for you. I did a lot of troubleshooting on the way and that is what I'm going to share with you and timestamp as well. The bit that had me the most nervous about the trip, the thing that had me researching and reading for hours and watching YouTube videos was can I carry paints when I fly? How do I carry them and how do I make sure <laughs> that security does not throw away my paints do I travel with them at all can I carry tubes or do they have to be pans and if I can travel with them what colors do I take how do I pick what to carry with me these are just some of the questions that I'm going to answer so that you don't have to do the hours of research that I did long story short you can fly with paints but pay attention if you don't want to have your paints thrown away at the airport I will be primarily talking about watercolor and gouache because they're my favorite mediums and what I travel with but feel free to extend this to the mediums that you use accordingly. So paint in tubes will be part of your liquid allowance which means that they need to be in tubes less than 100 mils and that all these tubes and all your other liquids need to be able to fit in a 20 by 20 centimeter bag. Any tube that is more than 100 mils or anything that doesn't fit in this 20 by 20 centimeter bag, you'll either need to put in check-in luggage or you'll need to figure out a different way of carrying it in, but it won't be carry-on luggage essentially. It is also always worth double checking with the airline that you're actually flying with. In terms of words to say and not say, because paints can quite often have a negative connotation, describe them as artist pigments or artist colours or watercolours or artist colours made with vegetable oil. But don't just describe them as solvents or paints or oil paints because they do have negative connotations and that may mean that they get taken away. I personally like carrying my paints with me, but if you are going to leave them in check-in luggage, then also leave a note attached to them to explain what they are or with the data safety sheets that you can get from the individual paint companies to explain that they are non-hazardous, that the flashpoint is X, Y and Z so they're not flammable as well and to just reassure whoever ends up checking your bag that they are safe. If you like using your gouache wet but you don't want to carry all the tubes then I have the perfect solution for you. I've done a whole separate video highlighting the pros and the cons of this palette but in a nutshell I absolutely love it because it keeps my paints nice and moist. It works for watercolour as well as gouache paints and it allows me to carry 16 colours in a compact way. It comes with a portable expandable cup, it comes with a silicone lid to keep the paints nice and moist the inner portion of the lid is perfect to mix your own colours. The only potential limitation to be aware of is that the palette itself doesn't explicitly say what the maximum amount of liquid it can carry is. Now I didn't have a label and I still carried it and put it with my liquids and it was fine. Security asked me what it was, I explained and they were happy with my description and it was fine. But if I wanted to be extra safe then I would probably just print out a label that says 100 mils and stick it on there so that at least that's done. Another thing that I tried was I left my gouache open for a day I let it dry out in the palette and then I carried that as part of my normal luggage excluding it from the liquids and again that was fine and once I reached the other side I just added water re-wetted it and it was back to normal so that is another thing that you can consider doing if you don't have enough liquid allowance. For my watercolours, like approximately 40% of the people in the community tab, I like to actually carry pans rather than tubes. And if I do have tubes, then I like to convert them into pans. And I got this lovely palette from Amazon that I was able to use to create my own customised palette with. And if you want to check out that video, then I will link it up above for you. I love this palette because it's small, because it's portable and because it's metal and more importantly, magnet friendly which will come in massively handy later on and I'll explain why. With regards to the colours that I pick, I go into why I pick those Daniel Smith colours in that respective video. But for this video, as well as having the split primaries, 
I also decided to carry my student grade less expensive paints so that I am free to experiment and don't feel so precious about the supplies that I have that I don't actually paint and in terms of deciding those colours I went for the colours that I use most in my Cotman set which were the sap green permanent rose and Payne's grey. I then referenced my big swatch seat to just see what colours I have available and the main consideration for me was what colours do I think I'm going to need to paint Venice. I was imagining beautiful blues and beautiful greens and like nice Venetian reds and these colours as well as colours that I felt would help me mix these colours were the ones that I started to lean towards in terms of completing my palette and I encourage you to do the same. Have your split primary palette but then also add colours that you think you're going to see or that you're going to mix that are going to add interest so really think about where you're going and what you think you're going to paint I ended up being a bit extra and essentially carrying 20 watercolours with me of which 10 were professional grade Daniel Smith and then the other 10 were Windsor and Newton Cotman set. As we watched me playing around with the blues to try and figure out which of the eight blues I have I should add to my palette I'd like to just gently remind you that if you are enjoying this content don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button as it makes a massive difference to my channel especially as I'm still growing and it lets me know that the hours I put into it was worth it. After I swatched out all the colours I ended up making notes on what I liked and what I didn't like and just to say this is from the Windsor and Newton Cotman set and in the end I think I decided to carry the intense phalo blue because I thought that it would be nice for mixing and nice for the skies that I anticipated being there and if I wanted a different kind of blue I still had my Daniel Smith blues to also use. The next consideration is how are you going to carry water and for the most part I tend to have empty containers that I then fill in once I'm on the other side but one of the cute containers that I found is this one which is metal and just clips on the side of your notebook another thing to consider is like a nice jar because that again will be waterproof and you'll be able to dip your brush and paint on the go with that I also like to carry like a misting bottle that I can use to re-wet my paints but that by no means is like a essential is just like a perk if you like and then I also have this expandable cup that I mentioned comes with the palette that I absolutely love and this is a large pot that can carry probably around 400 mils of water it has ridges on the top so that you can balance your paintbrush as well as holes on the side to again balance your paintbrush and then it collapses flat and just hugs your palette so it's a nice handy way to have a cup with you and if you are around a water source or have a water bottle with you then it's perfect but just be mindful that you can't actually carry water with you. Another solution is these aqua pens that you just unscrew and fill with water and then by squeezing them you push water through to the brush and you can just use that instead of actually carrying water with you. So this is just a nice extra thing that I like to carry in case I won't be able to get water any other way. And these are kind of my water solutions that I have found and I hope are also helpful for you. What are you going to carry everything in? I recommend getting a case that is affordable, that's sturdy, that's a good size and has compartments that affords you the flexibility of just storing your art supplies well. For me, it was this case that I got from Amazon that I not only loved because it could fit all of my art supplies, but also because it was flexible and I was also able to store my paintbrushes safely, which I'll show you later. Another recommendation is to carry like a cheap and expensive pencil case like this one, for example, that folds flat that you can then add your art supplies so that for example when you just want to carry a limited amount when you're actually on holiday you can do so and leave the rest in your main case. These cost usually under a pound they're found in a kids section they won't take up much space and they'll protect your art supplies. If you've seen my sketchbook tour and the sketchbooks that I created and why then you know that I like finding solutions to little problems that I have and one said solution was basically that I wanted more mixing space with either gouache or watercolour. I just wanted to have like a nice big open palette that I can carry with me and for that I basically used this tin of watercolour pencils, took out the pencils, took out the plastic, I then attached some um, palette paper onto it using glue dots and just like a few sheets of palette paper and that is essentially my makeshift extra palette that folds flat fits inside the case and allows me to basically blend to my heart's content and to continue to mix the colors to my heart's content without worrying about running out of space or muddying my colors 
it's incredibly inexpensive and to be perfectly honest I could have considered using like enamel paint if I thought of this on time in order to then not have to reuse palette paper but there's just so many different things that you can do with this cheap one pound tin <laughs> and also because it's a tin I'm able to use magnets just to attach it securely to whether it be my palette as I'm doing here or whether I want to attach it to my sketchbook as I did oftentimes so again just afforded me more flexibility and I can't just glance over how amazing it was to have these magnets so although they're clips because I was able to clip them to my sketchbook or to clip them to like a bit of chipboard I was able to attach my palette securely and almost had like a makeshift table with me when it comes to brushes because I have the case that I've already recommended I was able to carry them safely without worrying about damaging the bristles which is great that being said I also like to have travel brushes with me whether they be the aqua brushes that I'm showing here or the retractable brushes that you've seen me use many times I like to carry one good quality watercolour brush that I know I will use for the majority of the watercolour paintings as well as some mixed media brushes that I can use for both my watercolours as well as my gouache. So to be perfectly honest I didn't carry all these brushes with me but at the time I initially thought I would <laughs> and then I had to like be a little bit more selective. Pen wise, you know, I love my uni pin fine liners, so I carried them in 0.1, 0.3, and 0.5 size. I then also like carrying the four color biro because it's just nice to have a pen that you know is like reliable and you have multiple colors in. And I also carried a mechanical pencil, a rubber some tape to get those nice clean edges and then the ever reliable Posca pen for those white highlights. As well as the magnetic clips another unexpected kind of highlight from the trip that enhanced my painting experience when in Italy was this mat. So it's a small mat that's foldable that can go into your bag, it is waterproof, it is thermal and it basically allowed me to be able to paint anywhere like I could just put it out, it didn't take up much space in my bag it's big enough for me to sit on and it allowed me to be able to sit on the steps of this canal for example without getting wet and without freezing so if you're traveling and space is limited then it's incredibly helpful and again I will link it down below in the description for you I think it's like a camping mat or something along those lines and also the other thing is I do tend to like get quite cold especially as I went there in spring so as well as dressing appropriately for the weather also consider the fact that you may be colder than you would be otherwise because you won't be moving for a prolonged period of time so I like to use hot hands or sometimes you can get these pads that you warm up and then attach to yourself and they just made my trip so much nicer because I wasn't as cold as I would have been otherwise. So this in addition to like a bit of chipboard or cardboard that I attached everything to is basically what was inside my travel bag when I was traveling around Venice. If you are still listening then you are a real MVP and I really really appreciate you. Let me know that you're still listening by telling me a clever travel hack or one of your favorites from this video. These are the supplies that I took with me on this trip but if you want to check out the video of all my other art supplies that I've also traveled with then check out this video at the end. If you want to catch more about my time in Italy then definitely check out this video you won't be disappointed Venice is stunning. Thank you so so much and I will see you next week. Bye!